Hey everyone, this is Trevor Daly with Magmod. Hey, thanks for joining us for another How I Shot It. I am excited uh, to be speaking today with Hector Vasquez and Devin McCabe from Inspire Photos. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here with me. Thank you so much for having yeah. us. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, no, I, I'm really excited about this. And um, guys, would you mind sharing? And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of overlay. Um, can you tell everyone where to find you on Instagram? Hector, why don't we start with you? Yeah, um, you can uh, find me at inspire photos underscore um that is the direct in um, instagram name uh you can look me up as well and it should automatically come up hector vasquez as well awesome thank you so much and devin and mine is devin underscore inspire photos we just have two separate pages just to show two different styles i love that so now you guys i, I you have a really interesting business partnership because mm -hmm. you're you're not a couple you're not married right right but you work together uh and and you you both have different kind of ways of seeing things and and uh maybe even i don't know lighting things i how does that work exactly like is there one person that's kind of the mastermind and or do you guys both kind of run things <clears throat> Well, a lot of times when we're at a location itself, if we've never been there, we of course like to scout it. And in the process of scouting it, we come up with the ideas itself when we're just in the moment kind of concept. Um, Devin shoots differently than I do. So I look for the real scenic um, impact areas that I can really get creative with. Um, and sometimes my creativity goes a little bit too far and I see things that are super absorbed and you really can't do certain things. but um and there's times that once i see it i don't have the right equipment and then since me and her always shoot everything all the time together like that she might be equipped it properly or vice versa where devin will see a location and really try to get creative and then i'll add my little parts to it as well so we bounce off of each other pretty well because of the creativity styles that we have she's on one side of the spectrum i'm on the other side and we find a way to make it mesh in the middle I love that. I love that. Is that how you see it as well, Devin? Absolutely. Like we, we do go on to the weddings and we'll each try to say, okay, well, what do you want to do today? And like, I'll find like a creative shot that I want to do and he'll have one in his pocket. So, and we respect that on each other's, you know, creativity so that we're not doing the same exact creative shot. So we'll have yeah. like a couple different things. Well, I'm excited to have you guys on here and I'm excited to show your images. Um, I, I know of you guys because you're actively in the Magmon community. Devin, you're always, I see you on the How I Shot It's all the time. <clears throat> so again, I'm excited to have you guys here. Should we jump into these images? Yeah. Let's go. All right, let's do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Um, and this first image here, this actually was one that you guys just shared in the Magmon community, not more than maybe a few days or a week ago. Um, and but what a cool, interesting image. And, and if it's small, you can't even tell exactly what's going on. And then you bring it up and you're like, what? Like, it looks like stacked picnic tables, right? Is that is that yep. what this is? It was the same concept as what we were saying when we're on location. This is our new um, wedding that this was their engagement session. And we explained to them, this was towards the end, we saw a, a concept that we were looking into and we just wanted to try something with you and they were all for it. So we wanted to make sure that we got what they needed first and then got into this. And this is the same thing that I was just talking about where I see a concept and I know what it wanted to look like. I just don't have the proper tools in my hand to do it with and Devin, in the process did. So we actually posted that plus another shot in the Magma community to, to, to have a different view. Um, and then this was her shot and mine was all from the side angle. So this just goes to show that what I see is what she can still put together. Um, and then if she saw the same thing, she will tell me and have that same you know, breath at the end saying, yeah, I know exactly what you're looking for. I know exactly what you need. And then edit um, the edit and Devin did as well. So she's getting um, that part fully taken care of. Yeah, you guys got each other's back. So Devin, what, tell us what your lighting setup was for this shot. So we put um, an 80 on both sides of them uh, pointing in. We had a mag sphere and a mag gel. We used blue and red just to kind of like crossover but it was actually like facing into the picnic tables it wasn't facing at them and the ambient light is just coming from above them because they were standing in the middle of all of these stacked picnic tables so we know we didn't have to um, light them we just needed to create some color 
Gotcha. Gotcha. So in other words, the ambient light is what's lighting them up. And then you just use the gels to light up the picnic tables. Yes. Uh, red on one side, blue on the other. I love it, you guys. It makes it such a really cool, interesting photo. And, and these are the types of images that I think are fun because you put clients there and you're like, hey, we're going to shoot a photo in the middle of picnic tables. And they're kind of <laughs> like, what? And then they see the image and they're like, wow, these guys are magicians, you know? Magicians. <laughs> That's so. fun. That's yeah. awesome, you guys. Well, let's let's jump over to this next shot here. This one is, um, oh, let me just close this out real quick. So we have this one of the, this ring shot here. Um, what a cool! It looks like a ring shot with a shoe. Can and and it looks like there's even smoke or something. I can't tell if that's in the edit or if that's the actual photo. You guys, have to tell me about this one. Okay, so this was like during the shutdown and everything, and I'm like, I gotta stay creative. I need to play and practice. So I set this up in my living room. I. I have actually my fire pit inside my living room and so it's got a reflective top. So I'm like, let me grab a, a snoot. I used a snoot to light up the rings. And uh -huh. then behind that, I used um, a mag sphere on an 8200 with a pink gel. And then my husband blew some vape smoke behind it. So it all just <laughs> kind of came together. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and then there's one more ring shot here. Then was this one set up similarly or, or it, is this? It, it was that's it's exactly the same set without of course the smoke um we were at a wedding and i was reminded um by devin's ring shot that she was practicing i'm like you know what show me what you did and how you did it and basically set it up and you know the snoot going right on to the um ring again mag sphere behind um lighting up the wall itself and you know shooting it straight in with the reflective bottom so it was the exact same shot without the smoke that's so funny, you guys. I love how Hector, how you're like, hey, tell me what you did on that one shot. Like, that's really cool that you guys are able to kind of really just toss these ideas back and forth off each other in real time, like during a wedding environment. I just I love that. Um, and so you said this was mag snoot. And then uh, you also use the magenta gel. Is that right? Magenta gel, magenta gel with a spear on the back, very low power setting um, just to give that contrast of light. And it actually worked out better than I expected because I, I thought there was going to be more spill and it ended up just cutting off right where the wall ended. So it, it works out. You guys, this is another image that I thought was just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> uh, and, and this had to be shot at nighttime, right? <laughs> actually, it was shot at three o'clock, about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we have a video that goes along with that just to show, give you a better idea of a behind the scenes of really what it looked like. And I thought it would complement the picture even more to show that, you know, having two ADs on each side with the, we had a mag box uh, at six o'clock behind me and her husband is spraying water into the pool. So it was like a full dynamic of things, but that box really had to be perfected to hit them without spilling all over the place. I mean, it was really cool. It was really interesting. And this is my, um, my, um, my best man's daughter and her boyfriend. So, okay. yeah, it's, uh, this was just, yeah. Yeah. Hanging out. And I was like, you know what, we have the lighting in the car. Let, let's, you know, get our lighting out, go put on a dress, tell Martin to put on a dress shirt and you guys are jumping in the water. And they were like, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. And so this was three lights. Is that right? Yeah, this was a three light setup. It had the mag, mag box um, behind me at around seven o'clock. And then you had the two um, ADs pointing inwards to create that um, star effect. Air flash. And then and then just just for clarification, when you say ADs, are you referring to the AD 200s? The AD 200s. Yes. I'm sorry. No, no, that's OK. I, I figured it's probably, you know, you guys just between each other. Hey, pass me an AD or, you know, something. Yeah. So, <laughs> So here's here's the actual movie from this and let's let's make this nice and big here. I want people to be able to see this. So this is this is them coming and so you have now did you have the flash set up the same on this one or is this just, that, this just this was kind of this was the actual shot that came out of that um that same concept. So once they jumped in, it was already still set up. So once he pushed her straight up, it was just an, another fire right behind him. Right. I got <laughs> I got you. Is that do I see a flash sitting that on is. that chair right there? Is yep. that what Okay. Yep. And then there's another chair with the same setup. On the other side. Gotcha. So here they are running. Oh, I see the spraying the water too. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> we had a good slowing down. So it's a really good behind the scenes because this is like, you'll see it one pop shot. And it was yeah. only that time that you had because there was no repeat. That, that's the that's the best part about doing those uh, 
when they're jumping the water type shots is you really don't get a second chance to do it. You, you have to nail it that first time, right? I mean, if they get yeah. out, they don't, they don't nearly look. So good stuff, you guys. I love it. And I love, by the way, I love on that last shot, how it was during daytime, but you made it dark. Did you make it dark by, by with your shutter speed or with your aperture? What did you, what do you typically like to do when you, you know, are doing that? Um, to make it more dark, I mean, I have this big bad habit of shooting at, at 8,000, <laughs> my shutter speeds, and, and people just always come at me, why do you have to shoot that high? Why There's no reason to shoot that high. It's my preference. I want to make sure that if I'm freezing something, that there is no way it's going to go past 8,000. So, you know, up the up the shutter speed and then up the aperture a little bit more so to create that dynamic range. And then, you know, from there, use the light. I'm different than Hector. I won't shoot that high in shutter, but I will up my aperture to like f16 or so just to like darken out that ambient. Gotcha. So, so Devin, you use the aperture. Hector tends to use the shutter. So Hector, right. you must be using high speed sync then in order to. Yes, yes, okay. definitely high speed. I, 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 yeah, always. Majority of the time, uh, I want to say about 80% of the time, I'm always in high speed. <clears throat> Very cool. Well, guys, this is another great shot. Tell us about this one. I, I love these groomsmen shots, but I think what's fun about this one is they look less posed and it's more kind of like, hey, we're just having a great time, you know? And actually, that's exactly what it was. I mean, we put the, the 8200 behind them um, with a sphere and um, one in front of them with a grid. And we were just like, guys, just smoke. Just like do what you normally do and don't even pay us no mind because we're just trying something. And it was really trying to get this shot set up and the accidents that we always do for light practice always work. So right. I've gotten into that conditioning where let's just shoot it. Let's see what the light looks like. Oh, wait, you know what? Might as well use this, you know, and yeah. woman. 100%. I, so where was, okay, so you had one flash behind them. Now, what's interesting is oftentimes when we see smoke with our, you know, with our eyes, it looks white, but when the flash hits it, it tends to light it up kind of as the light coming off the flash. Now, so I'm wondering, did you use a gel behind them on the flash or was that just a, a bare? Uh, no, that was, that was a it, sphere. Okay, mag sphere. And then what yes. was, what was lighting from the front again? Uh, mag grit, uh, excuse me. Yeah, Magrid. Yep, I'm sorry. Grid. Um, coming coming on camera left. Camera left. Was it? It must have. Was it behind the the groomsmen on the left? Well, no. What happened was the groomsmen on the left were more. Um, the, the 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 depth of field was completely different because everyone was literally moving within an area. Uh -huh. So it was it was so, more in front of the groomsmen on the yeah, left. Yeah. Correct. And and pointing right at the groom. I love it. <laughs> This was a maternity shot. Um, we have a um, historical village that's that we live near. So a lot of people like these um, certain areas, but maternity on the hill. And when I saw the concept, Devin was actually taking um, them up the road some. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stay down here because I see what I see. And when she was completed, I basically told her to where to position it. We had a mag box on a camera left of them. And Devin was pretty much where that, lanky tree is um you know holding it up in the air right on top of them i love that you can pull out the cloud detail with the mag box you can overpower the sun because it was like midday when we did this one. Oh yeah oh yeah so hector was actually not on this wedding with me he was um in puerto rico i think and um so i just had fun with the guys i mean i took them outside it was actually at a gun club so there wasn't really much to do inside it was very small I'm like, I got to get creative somehow. So I brought the mag box outside and I put um, an 8200 behind them with a sphere just to light up the smoke. And then I had the mag box with 180 in it, just kind of um, camera left, pointing down at them. And, you know, just told them, just hang out, you know, be guys. And that's it. And I just wanted to capture the detail. And I edited, I edited a lot of my stuff with uh, the visual flow crush presets. And I also mm. started using the two man preset. So I'll go back and forth, but crush is my favorite. But then for this one, I think I might've used Jaegerbaum, two man Jaegerbaum for this, just to pull out yeah. that detail. And I prefer more punchy <clears throat> contrast edits. Hector doesn't so much, but I love this. Thank you, Devin, for sharing that. Um, mm. What about this one here? This one, in fact, you're talking about a little bit more punchy. This one kind of reminds me of that. It kind of has a little bit of a punchiness to it, uh, but, but it looks like it, you guys, 
Well, I actually, you tell me. I, it's funny. Sometimes <laughs> I like to dissect. Have you, guys, you guys ever do that when you look at an image and you try to dissect the lighting? Yeah. So, Every um, single, it, it makes hard to watching TV so much worse because you right? see every little detail. Yes. Yep. So so tell me about the tech. Well, basically what this one was, was actually two mag boxes, one on each side, camera left and camera right, basically linear to each other, like a badger lighting. Um, and then we had another kicker light behind the motorcycle to just give it, just to lessen the shadow behind it and push it, pushing it basically downwards so that we don't have this bleed of black right behind it. Nice. Yeah. You know what's interesting about this shot is, is if somebody has a motorcycle like this, they want to make sure that motorcycle gets featured. And mm -hmm. had you not had that box on that, you know, on the other side there, I don't think it would have lit that bike up quite enough. Right. Um, so you really lit it up, you highlighted it. And I'm sure for them, that was like, yeah, you got, you know, you got the bike in there. And this is her bike. <laughs> so it was a big the, deal. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool that she rides. Very cool. Um, well, good deal. Well, you guys feel free to slow me down if I'm ever going too fast. I just, there's so many great shots here. I want to make sure to feature them all if you can. Um, Devin, I think this one, uh, you, you have, uh, this, uh, let's, I'll have you explain yeah. this shot. Okay. So my daughter turned 14. This is my daughter, Kate. She turned 14 and she has everything in the world. So I was like, what can I do to, you know, do something different? So I got her makeup done. I rented a really cool car, you know, one of those three wheel cars with the top off. I don't know if you've seen yeah. them around here. So we rented a car and I basically had her be a celebrity for the day. I took her to the pier down at the beach and my son was my assistant. My son is 23, he was my assistant. So he held the mag box, um, camera left pointing at her and she was freezing. I felt so bad, but I'm like, just do it. And I love it. It's one of my favorite images. It's on my wall. I love it so much. She hates That's it, awesome. I love it. <laughs> That's fun. What a, what a, a fun experience for her. And uh, and you said uh, um, this was for her birthday. It was kind of like a birthday gift. Her birthday, yeah. Just to, you know, make her feel special for the day. And she loved it, having her makeup done. It's just something different. And her friends, you know, it's all about making the friends envious, you know. <laughs> and they were. <laughs> all about the glam, right? You know, she's got yeah. photos for me. It was cool. But and to have my son assist me was like so incredible he doesn't ever help me and he did it because it was her birthday and he's like okay mom i'll help you and that was cool that's really cool well it's a beautiful shot and your, your daughter's beautiful so yeah. love it love it what about this one you guys this one uh you know i love this shot because anytime i've tried champagne uh shots it looks terrible but you guys nailed it here <laughs> yeah we we know we know that we know that with a little bit of help, um, but um, you know the same concept. Actually, I believe in this one we had two AD two hundreds behind the couple in more of a V section with the spheres on it, or just one. Mm -hmm. Just one. Okay, so it was the one with the um, mag sphere, and then we had the mag box in front of them with uh, one AD two hundred as well. So it was like a sandwich concept. And then made sure to explain how to spray the champagne, not put your thumb straight on the bottle, you know, making sure that yeah. you've, you develop a, a system. And um, I mean, and it, spray it, it, out that, instead of up, because then you'll yeah. get soaked. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure every wedding photographer has gone through this situation where you finish this shot and then you look at yourself and you're drenched. Yeah. And then you laugh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think the key is making sure that hole is tiny, right? And, yes. And, uh, so far too often you get clients that, you know, will pop it and they think that it's going to spray like this, but then it just kind, of, just kind of like, <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, there goes half the bottle just, you know, flying out without right. the spray. So um, that's why you bring three it. bottles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this is great. I, so it was, you had one light in front with the mag box and then you had the 8200 behind them with the mag sphere and, and you're using right. that mag sphere to kind of spread that light out. On the yeah. Direction. To really, to really blow out and disperse the light to try to catch every single droplet that, you know, hits the air, um, a little bit of post editing as well. Um, but I mean, all in all, I mean, uh, we're pretty happy with it. Yeah, no, I love it. It's a beautiful Thank shot. You guys. Thank you. All right. Let's jump into this one here. This now this one I, I when you guys sent me your images and I, I wanted to you know kind of pick some here. There's so many great ones, but I, I think the reason that this one caught my eye was because we we featured images kind of like this before with a silhouette of the bridal party with a um, you know the, the couple lit up 
And some people do it with the mag grid, some people do it with the mag snoo. Um, I, so this was one of those <clears> where I thought, you know, what? I'm curious how you guys did it. And not only is the couple beautiful, but the sky is intense as well. It's, it's gorgeous. So tell us about this one. This one, this is one of my favorite ones um, because it was when the um, mag beam was really starting to be in its cusp and starting to be used. And I saw it, I'm like, I can really do some, you know, serious damage by myself um, so that the mag beam helps me without, you know, having Devin there all the time to hold the light into position like perfectly. I can shoot from afar and still be able to get what I need. This was a little bit more difficult because I had the mag beam where I was at on the ground and they were up on top of a hill. So shooting upwards, I didn't wanna have that beam catch the, the bride and groom and then filter off into everyone else. So I told everyone else to take a couple steps back to mm -hmm. separate that depth of field. Um, and then just in post edit, all I did was the sunset was coming down and I just messed with the contrast a little bit and um, the white balance and literally the sky just really got pulled out. And I was very amazed by it. Um, and this is actually hanging in, um, what is that? It's running Deer's, um, Running Deer is a golf club here, uh, golf course, excuse me, um, here that Jaworski, Ron Jaworski uh, owns. And it's literally hanging in their property. It's, I really have an attachment to this image. I don't know why. It just really was one of my pinnacles. That's awesome, That's awesome Hector. And, and uh, you know, what's great is, you know, I brought up the fact that people have used the Mag Snoo and the Mag Grid. Um, but I, I don't think I've heard people use the mag beam for this, but you're right. It's the exact same principle. And what's great about it is you can put it back further out of the frame and just get that beam of light lighting up, you know? Yeah. I really love them. I love the beam. If I can use the beam I'll, at any time, I'll always get it and grab it. I really enjoy that modifier. That's the only one I don't have. I want it. <laughs> Super cool guys. Well, this is another one that, um, caught my attention again with a bridal party, um, but here we have all these different colors of smoke and stuff. Tell us about this one. Okay, so this was um, a couple and they had this vision that they wanted to do a rainbow smoke shot. So we decided to do it at night rather than during the day because we really wanted to, you know, do something different and stand out. So we put, um, this This was probably about two years ago. So we we would have done it a lot differently now. We put one AD200 behind them with the sphere so that we can light up the smoke. And then in front of them, camera left, we had a mag grid on them. But I think that knowing now what we do, what we would have done would have two AD200 behind them with two, with two mag spheres, you know, to really capture all of that smoke. Because I don't think that the detail was captured as much as it should have been. That's, I, I like that. I, Devin, I like how you actually kind of are thinking kind of like, okay, if I were to pre-visualize this and see this again, mm -hmm. knowing what I've learned over the last year or two, um, right. I might do this differently. I, I, I like how you say that because that's interesting because it's a, it's a good thing to do as photographers to kind of look at our images and say, okay, what can we do differently? Mm -hmm. You know, even the, our favorite images, what can we do differently to make them even better next time? Um, very cool. So you had one mag sphere behind them, one mag grid, uh, lighting them up in front. Beautiful. Love it, love it, another you guys. Cool thing, another cool thing to do is like go back to your old weddings from like two years ago and and edit them how you would now. You'd be amazed. Like maybe we didn't suck so bad. Like for me, like I think like, wow, those images were horrible. But then I re-edit them and I'm like, wow. <laughs> and I get blown away. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point. I love that. Even just pick some learning and evolving. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Super, super cool. And then what about this one here? Um, you know, it seems like in every wedding, especially if it's, you know, in the wintertime, like now there's always a little bit of fire somewhere. Yeah. But I like how you the fire here. It looks like in a fire pit or some something, right? Yeah. So there was um, just a fire pit and, um, you know, with COVID, everything is smaller. So we have to do a lot more with just the couple. And so I exposed for the fire and then I used a mag grid, just a mag grid. I don't think I would have used a mag grid. Like I said, we go back and look at it again because his hands are um, not lit up enough and her hands. And I think that I just wanted a little more spill on her hands. But other than that, I love this image and the couple is super happy. So the mag grid on an 8200 camera right behind the fire pit, kind of like up and down on them. I always say like, put it up and down for everything. <laughs> yeah. I like that. You know, you know, it's funny, Devin, I'm, I'm, I'm not a hand person. I, hands, for whatever reason, hands in photographs always bother me. Not, really? they don't always bother me. 
but I don't know what it is. Fingers to me are just like one of the ugliest little things. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I actually, I actually kind of like the fact that the hands are dark right there. Right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh and let's, uh, what about this one here, guys? Uh, let's see. We got a few more here, but uh, this, this one looks amazing. Tell me, tell me about this yeah. one. Well, it's the same couple that was just in the fire shot. Of course, it was just earlier in the day. Um, same concept. Uh, Devin's holding a, the mag box uh, camera left, right? Oh, just shy of behind them. Um, and then getting that high-speed shutter once again to make sure that I have that clarity. Um, and then Devin edited, I believe this is with Crush, um, Develop Crush. Visual what? Flow Crush, yeah. A visual Flow, I'm sorry. So now, I, and I apologize, this isn't a lighting question, but tell me, when you guys are trying to set up a couple to do something like this, is there any any prompts or any way you can tell them, you know, hey, I want you to dip her or bend her, or did you tell them how to bend her? <laughs> what do you guys normally do? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things. I mean, I, I, I always use the term peanut butter jelly. Like, explain it to me, like, if you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich so that I have every detail understood. I go to the couple to tell them the exact same thing. Put your hand here, put your hand here, dip them. When you dip them, what I want you to do is this is what I want you to imagine and basically push the emotion that I want to pull out of them in an image into their head already. So when I told him lean into her and really make it like, you know what, today's the first day of the rest of our lives. And like, if you wanna come in and then start whispering like the alphabet in her ear, if I wanna make them chuckle, um, something like this, they were really emotionally animated, let's just say, cause everything that they've done with each other was just was so passionate. There was really no direction that we really needed to just, you know what, look at each other and just be into each other. And they know exactly what they're, what we're talking about. This couple that. was so afraid because of their height. He's six foot seven and she's six foot two. And they were so afraid that um, it would be a challenge at the wedding. Like when we sat down with them with their consultation, she was like, I'm so scared. Like, I hope that you can capture us right. They were so happy with everything. I mean, yeah. you can't tell how tall they are, but yeah, he's six foot seven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have never guessed that. That's awesome. Wow. Wow. Super cool, guys. That's what's important um, about getting to know your clients and their fears before you shoot their wedding. You know, I actually, so I, I unshared my screen just for a second. I actually, I'm, I'm curious about that. So you talked about kind of the fears. Is there a certain question that you typically like to ask couples or when you're kind of getting to know them before the wedding? Um, you know, like There's how did you find that question they just brought out? Well, I mean, when, when we sit down with a couple, um, when we were, when we, we were able to sit down with a couple, um, it was really the, what we brought out of them, just talking, just trying to connect with them on a one-on-one -on -one level, really making them feel and understand that we are not here for your wedding. We're here for the long term. You know, we're going to be the ones that you call when you have kids and things of that sort. So we want to really be a part of you, you know, like who you are. And we've, have friends that were clients that we still are friends with, um, which is actually how my best man and um, the pool shot, they started as a client of mine and now they're family yeah. to me. So it, you know, we really want to get into their world. Um, and Devin is tall. So they had more of a, a connection there and they started talking in regards to just the height and I'm five, eight. So, I mean, I'm five, nine. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and right. just worry about what everyone else is talking about. But it was, it's a different connection. I personally couldn't connect with them that way, whereas yeah. she could. So having that balance, it, it does help. It, it helps a lot. Just like you said in the beginning, trying to find a second photographer um, to yeah. do the work kind of concept is very difficult. There is more benefits to having someone that you can work with directly because if there's things that I'm having trouble with as far as creative blocks, or if I don't see something that I really want to, you know, I'll question her and vice versa. She comes to me with a lot of stuff as well. How do you think this should be done? And, you know, my opinion matters to her and my, her opinion matters to me. So we can bounce off of each other respectfully and get our point across sometimes you know, just like in a, in a work environment, you sometimes, you know, bicker between each other. But in the end, we're here for our clients. We're here for them. We're here to, you know, to make sure that their day ends the way it needs to. And then we're also here yeah. for other photographers if they want to learn different things as well. So, I mean, we both have qualities that we share with everybody. And you know another that. thing, Trevor, real quick, um, with 
we try to do an engagement session for all of our weddings and we try to shoot it together, you know, so that they can get to know who we are in behind the lens and we can get to know what they're not comfortable with in front of the lens. That way going into wedding day, we already know, okay, they're worried about their height or they're worried about, you know, their teeth or whatever. I've had that where the, br- the groom had like, he had like worked on on his mouth and I was like, don't worry about that. And it made me just understand I have to pose them differently. Right. So yeah, engagement right. sessions are key. That's Love key. it. Love it. Thank you guys. <laughs> No, I appreciate sharing that. Devin, I guess the, the, the real question then is you're tall. So how tall are you? I'm only five nine, five ten. <laughs> but I wear heels around that girl a lot. I'm swan in heels. <laughs> yeah, yeah like all you gotta do is wear heels, man. <laughs> no. This is a Hector shot. <laughs> Hector, tell us about this one. Same thing, as you see Lil Max Fear peeking out the back um, on an 8200. Um, I believe we had a sphere in the front this time and not a box. We didn't want this the, the light to, to I, I didn't want a full light spill. I just wanted to make sure that it was on them without using a sphere, uh, without using a grid. I wanted more of her feet to show because their signature was the Chuck Taylors for this wedding. Um, same concept, trying to light up the smoke um, and Sometimes, sometimes sparkler shots can get a little difficult because it's towards the end of the night and people are already um, going through the party phase. So we want to make sure that we grab the people that are not going to, you know, grab on to the sparkler to see how hot they are. Um, you know, so we, we, we are really, I'm very adamant when it comes to sparklers. I, I still think it's dangerous. People like them. And I just try to my best to educate um, our clients prior. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. I've seen at least three burned hands. And I, I want to say maybe even four, but people get burned hands because of sparklers. Now, granted, oftentimes it's just a, a bunch of them together. You got to be careful. But um, what a cool, I love the shot. And I love the fact that expression, her expression. I mean, he's smiling at her, but her expression yeah. is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were a very fun couple. She was just very animated throughout her whole wedding. Oh, yeah. So, I have noticed kind of a theme in a lot of your photographs where you you tend to sandwich the couple. You kind of do this cross lighting. You know, you mentioned kind of the the twelve o'clock and six o'clock, or you know, three and nine. Is that you guys tend to use kind of two lights, kind of sandwich like that a lot with a couple uh, in the middle? Me, I I like messing with light. If I can add more light, I would just to <laughs> highlight certain things. Um, sometimes it's not conducive as far as the image and time, but I personally have that. Um, cross lighting because it, it gives you both aspects just in case I'm missing something on the back end plus the halo that comes off of the one that's in the rear there's a lot of different things that you can really do with light yeah. well it just depends on the situation I mean yeah it's like kind of in the moment okay let's add another light gotcha love yeah. it love it all right we got three more images here guys you guys still have just a little bit more time sorry yeah. I'm yeah. taking up a lot of your time yeah, no, we'll go through these real quick. This is actually this is my portal shot. I don't, it somebody at the the wedding was talking about the game portal, and I'm like, well, this looks kind of interesting. And I actually went with the makeup artist and told her, hey, you know what, you're gonna do a setter shot. I don't have to. I, I, we carry setter spray in my bag. They already had it. Not a problem. Can you put your hand through? And she looked at me sideways, like, what are you talking about? I'm like, just work with me. And instead of using a key light that we would normally bring, I used her ring light and put a magenta um, a magenta gel in the back with the mag sphere on an 8200 again, and really was like, just go to town with the spray. I, wanted, I really want to have an experimental part to this. And this is what came out of it. And I, when I saw it in my <laughs> camera, I'm like, this is really, this, I, didn't, I didn't believe it really happened because of the way it came out. <laughs> Yeah, because I thought the bleed from the magenta was going to go on to the makeup artist's part to it, but it it held pretty close. I was very impressed by the shot. Yeah, no, I like it as well. It, like you said, it does. It looks like that the portal. I, I'm i curious, how far back was your AD200 with the magenta gel? Do you remember? Was it actually, actually as, or- as funny as it sounds, if you look straight ahead, you'll see a little ball and then the red line. That's her. That's a, a mirror. So that's a reflection of how far it was. So it might've been maybe two feet behind her. Yeah, real close. 
I love that. I'm going to have to give this a shot. My next wedding. <laughs> Those ring lights are popular now. Every makeup artist brings one because they're, you mm-hmm. know, they're, they're the makeup and so forth. Yeah. The ring lights I've noticed. And then now I've started noticing them having little like strip lights, little slate lights that they can bend inward. So I'll use that as a contrast as well and shoot in between them. Nice. Nice. That's cool. What about this one? This one looks like uh, like like they're in Costa Rica or something. <laughs> Devin, Devin, let me let me start with this one, Devin, first, real quick. I actually this is the same concept as what I was saying in the first shot. I see an image, I want to shoot it. For me, the lighting wasn't right, so I told Devin to shoot it, and I was the one in the back holding the light because I knew where I wanted it to be positioned. So it was still that that all around concept. She knows what I'm talking about. She knows where to stand. She knows her settings. Let me deal with the light right now. So to have someone that you can read off of like that, this is yeah. the kind of product that comes out of it. Yeah. So Hector and, and Devin, I'd love to hear kind of what your thought was on this shot. But Hector, before or before we do that though, Devin, Hector, were you actually in the water then? I was in the back, right on the banks of the water. Um, at first, I was. It was. It was actually a pretty nice day. This was done pretty um, early throughout the day as well. It had to be about four o'clock in the afternoon, right? Four or five o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was still light out, but again, the modifying in, in the camera, making sure that you block everything out, and then um, that light. I had a I had a Max Fear on the eighty two hundred. I think that was just a bare. Um, just those two. And I wanted to have that halo behind them the way it was. This is what I visioned, but this is what she shot. <laughs> That's really cool. I, I love, I can't believe that this was shot during daytime basically, mm-hmm. or before it was even dark. And so yeah. Devin, tell us about what you, like in the camera, I, I imagine you must've pushed your aperture pretty high and. Pretty high. Yes. And also the flash power was at full power. So that also helped, you know, um, capture all the droplets of the water. I was, we were in a river and it just happened to start pouring. <laughs> so we were like, let's just keep going. So we, um, we do have a behind the scenes video of this, but um, not in this setting, but yeah, I mean, I, I love this, that they're in the water, that it's pouring and just their expression, how it's really silhouetted out like that because of Hector's placement of the light. I just love it. And how it just glows on his, you know, shoulder right there. I love it. It's one of my favorite from 2020. It's, it's awesome. That is cool, you guys. I, yeah. I think, honestly, and I think what even makes it more impressive is the fact that you shot it when it was still, you know, yeah. it wasn't dark. Because this looks like it was shot at 10 o'clock at night. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just upped that aperture. That was so fun. Really push it up there, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Like we're well, that's what's so fun about. about... <laughs> no, that's cool. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So guys, again, I've taken up so much of your time, but let's let's mm-hmm. close with this last and final image here. This one's absolutely beautiful as well. Um, like, th- this yeah, is my, about this, one. this is the people that were jumping in the pool. This is their basically twin. This is her sister and her husband. So we use the family a lot, as you see. And this was a very uh, momentous moment because they didn't have their wedding shots done. Um, you know, the way that they wanted to, they, she had moved to California and really kind of, once they came back, I'm like, let's go put your dress on. This is what we're going to do. And we took them to the same place, the, the village that everyone likes to go on. And I believe Devin showed me this spot. It was a pretty good hidden spot. It was on a small crest Hill. And because of the lush trees, it, it still, it uh, gave them a good position, um, just in the frame itself yeah. had a mag box on to camera left. And Devin was pretty much maybe about three or four feet um, to the camera left on that. And then the edit just really, it was just something different. You know, it, it was a dark and sepia kind of concept. It was just more of a mood feeling to me. And, um, you know, I, Sean Lara actually <laughs> liked this and um, I sent him a message, you know, hearing that uh, you like this shot and he was actually going to steal it. So that's why I wanted to keep this for last because it, it really meant um, meaning to me to have someone in the industry that is respected to actually have a comment on something that we work on. And, you know, it's, it's more of a sad uh, realization that we're actually doing something right. Yeah, you are. You absolutely are doing something right. You guys are, you guys are killing it and I love your work. So. Um, this was just one mag box in, huh? Just to the left. Yep. 
Yeah. Just so one magma box to the left. Again, higher uh, the high speed sync to darken everything out and making sure that uh, uh, the good part to this is now I use mirrorless so I can see the image before I take it. And it really works, um, you know, a lot better than, you know, going with a, a regular uh, uh, SLR camera now. It's just yeah. the way the world is going. I love, so one of my favorite uh, composition tips. In fact, we were talking about briefly before we even did this about, uh, Devin, you were teaching um, a high school student or you're helping a high school student. Yes. And one of the things I love when I when I go to high school and speak, I love talking about uh, sub or sub framing. So framing where you actually have people kind of inside of a frame, inside of a frame sort mm -hmm. of thing. And so here you have these trees that are sub framing them, and I just I think that's fantastic. I it's my favorite my favorite compositional tip mm -hmm. or trick that I like. Photography. Yeah, it's something that I started doing a lot of seeing the bigger picture and putting the small people big world concept to a more closer feel, but still having that frame. Um, so you, it's all definitive. So I appreciate uh, that, you know, we're doing something all right again. Good stuff, you guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. It's, it's, like I said, it's very difficult, but I mean, um, you know, Devin second shoots for other people as well. I, you know, tell her to just to gain experience from who she can shoot with. Um, sure. I think I'm a little too intimidating to be asked a second shoot. I don't know why, but uh, I mean, we, we both come with the same qualities, you know, and aspects. I just come with a more impactful, you know, image and, you know, I hold myself to a different standard. That's awesome. Love it. Devin, any final words, any advice for uh, anyone that's, uh, you know, trying to break into this? Cause you, how, how long have you been doing this now, Devin? Five years. I came to Hector five, five years ago. Yeah. And it's just every single year. It's like you just keep leveling up. And and when you when you approached us to do this video, I was just like blown away. I'm like, this is where we want to be, <laughs> you know, and being recognized is super cool because we work our behinds off every day. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, don't let fear stop you. That's what I told the um, student that I spoke to this morning. I just said, look, don't be afraid to reach out to the superstars, you know, and that was my fear in the beginning. And now I'm friends with a lot of you guys. So it's cool. I love that. Very cool, you guys. Well, guys, this has been fun. And, and like I said, it's been a, a little bit of a, a different take. We normally tend to do these live. But again, I apologize for those who, who might have just caught the beginning of it. We we're having some tech issues, so we decided to just do this and, and we'll put it out there for everyone to watch. Um, but the one thing I do want to just mention is if anyone does have any questions, I would not be surprised if Hector and Devin would be more than happy to answer those questions. So yes. I can see that you're like, bring them. So yes. if you guys want to hit them up, um, their, their Instagrams are again at inspirephotos underscore and at Devin underscore inspirephotos. Uh, definitely go check them out. Their website is inspirephotos.com, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. Uh, so don't go give them a follow, go check them out, um, ask them any questions you might have. And of course, if you want to, even in the comments here, you can put those questions and we typically will see them, you know, every few days or so. Um, so appreciate you guys, Hector, Devin, appreciate you guys taking the time to be with me today and, and be able to chat about these images. I know we went through a lot of them. And so I appreciate you taking all that time to go through them. Um, but seriously, guys, you're, you're wonderful. And I, I just want to can't thank you enough. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for cause of you creating just a mag um, experience, I don't think we would be where we're at now. So, I mean, there's a lot of thanks that we have to give back to you as well. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I, you know, it, honestly, it's because of the Magmog community. It's just such a great group of photographers and you guys mm -hmm. are there and you guys make the Magmog community what it is. So we appreciate you. So, All well, right. thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us for another How I Shot It. We do these on a weekly basis, so uh, be sure to join us each and every week. And hopefully, if I can get a better computer or something worked out, we can get back to doing this live. But until then, I actually really enjoyed this format. And I, um, what I'm going to do is I can go in there and I can make these images a little bit bigger and stuff for everybody. So um, thanks again, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hector, Devin, thank you so much. You guys have an awesome day, okay? You too. Thanks. You as Bye. well. Thank you.